Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm looking at the sine and cos rules for working with triangles. This is something that comes up in GCSE and A level. I'll start by sharing you the formulas that you need to know and then I'll work through three examples. All the examples today are in degrees, not radians, but if you're doing A level um, and you have a question that's in radians, so you just need to switch your calculator to radians and do it exactly the same way. So do grab a pen and paper and do the work yourself, pausing and rewinding as you need. I do hope this is helpful, let me know how you get on and do get in touch starfishmaths at gmail.com. If you're ready, let's get started. So I'm going to show you the area of a triangle and the sine and cos rules. And for those formulae, we're going to use a triangle that's labelled like this. So um, the corners are labelled with uppercase letters and their corresponding opposite sides are labelled with lowercase. So opposite A is A, opposite B is B and opposite C is C. So small letters for sides, big letters for corners. So using those, I can now show you the formulae. The first formula we've got here is for the area of the triangle, a half A times B times sine C. So that's the two sides multiplied by sine of the angle. Next up we've got the sine rule and that is um, telling us that the proportions are the same for each. So a side divided by sine of the opposite angle will be equal to each of those ratios. So when you use this you normally condense it down to just being one equal um, to being two ratios equal to each other, um, but we'll go through that in a minute. And the last formula we need is the cos rule. This is the cos rule, so it looks slightly more complicated, I think, or just maybe harder to remember than the sine rule, but that's it there. So memorise those if you can, and we'll look at an example of how to use them. Um, generally, it's easy to know when to use this formula because it's the only one that gives you the area. Um, these ones are used to find either angles or sides um, and sometimes people have a bit of difficulty knowing which one to use. Um, if you label up your triangle for a question and put in what you know, it might become clear. But in general, um, just try and remember that the cos rule you use when you're interested in all three sides of the triangle. So either you're given all three sides and asked to find an angle, or you might be given two sides and an angle and asked to find the third side. So in either of those cases, you're interested, you're using all three sides of the triangle. In that case, you use cos. Let's look at some examples now. Okay, here we have a simple triangle. Um, that's all I'm going to give you to start with. It's just two sides and an angle. Um, let's start first with finding the area of that triangle. So once we've got our formula, the first thing we need to do is label the triangle in a way that's helpful. So because this uses A and B sides, I'm going, to, I'm going to label these sides as A and B. So that tells me the opposite corner is uh, the big letters. Opposite A is A and opposite B is B. Um, and then the last one is C. So we've got A, B and big C. So we're in a good position to use this rule. Have a go at putting those values in. Okay, and my calculator gives me 15.4 for that one. Next, let's have a go at finding this side here. Now, I mentioned earlier, if you're not sure whether to use the sine or cos rule, um, think about if you're interested in all three sides. Here, we've got two sides and we want the third. So, yes, we are inter interested in all three sides of that triangle. So, we're going to use the cos rule. So, here we have the formula. And it's all about labelling the triangle to make it work for you. So, um, we want this side here. So it's a good idea to make that side, relabel that A, so that that's the subject of the formula. So relabeling this, we're going to make this side A, which means that that corner is big A. And then the other two don't really matter which way round we put them. I'll just use that one as B, and this one as C. Have a go at putting those values in. Okay, that's a squared that gives us that, so we can then square root that to find a. And I make that to be 5.1. Okay, let's also um, use the rules to find an angle. Um, and let's try and find this one here. Now we can do it, now we've got all three sides, we can use the cos rule, or we could use the sine rule. Let's do it both ways just to practice and make sure we get the same answer. We'll start with using the sine rule. 
um, and this time I flipped the whole thing upside down to put the angles on the top um, and the reason for that is it's good to it's just helpful to have what you want to find on the top and um, it's less algebraic manipulation then so we're trying to find um, we'll keep the labels as they are because it doesn't really matter for this one we're trying to find the big angle B let's just tick what we know we're trying to find B and we've got the side B we've got the angle A and we've got the side A we've also got side C so we're looking to use the part of the sign rule that we've got all of or we're interested in so that's this bit here so we, we don't need that part so let's try putting in what we know okay once you've written it out the B is what we're trying to find we can multiply the 6 up to that side And then to get B, we just need to apply the inverse sign of that. And I make that 49 degrees. Alright, I'm writing that there, and we'll use the cos rule this time and do it again, just to check we get the same answer. Alright, we've got the cos rule this time, and remember what I said about labelling the triangle to make it work for you. Um, we're trying to find this one here, um, and that's angle B. And the only angle we've got in the formula is this one. Um, so really I want to make that A. So I'm going to relabel the triangle now. So I'm going to make this one A so it's involved in the formula and then that's the little a. And the other two don't really matter which way around we put them so we'll make that one B and this one C. Alright, let's try putting in what we know. Our unknown is all the way over here. You can um, rearrange it with the, just the algebra at the beginning, or you can work through um, and simplify some of these numbers before you rearrange. So we can make 6 squared is 36, and we can do x squared plus 5.1 squared, which gives us that. And then the 2 times 8 times 5.1, I get to be 81.6. So that's stuck together with the cos A. Now we can move this term over to that side and move the 36 onto that side. So then we'll have a positive 81.6 cos A and 90.01 take away 36. Then we can divide the 81.6 down onto that side to get 0 0.662 and then take the inverse cos of that number there and just rounding the answer I do get 49 again great I hope that's making sense let's look at a couple more questions to practice okay our next question I've drawn out a diagram and the question is to find BC so this length here BD which is this length and the area of this triangle ABD. Have a go if you'd like, otherwise stick with me. So first of all to find that uh, length of the triangle, that side BC, um, I'm going to take the whole triangle here and I'm going to sketch it out at the side um, and we can ignore that line in the middle just mark in what we've got. So we've got the angle 50 degrees and we've got that side is 14 and this one is 6. We're wanting to find this side here. So again, we're in the situation we've got two sides, I'm wanting the third side. We're interested in all three sides. So I'm thinking you use the cos rule. As before, I'm going to label the triangle to make it work. Um, so the length we want to find, I'm going to make that little a. So that means that this corner is a and then the other two don't really mind. Okay, I'm not going to write out the cos rule again this time. Hopefully you've got that by now, you've got it written down or in your head. Um, and let's have a go at putting the numbers in. Okay, and I make that to be 11.1. Great, well done if you got that. All right, next we're going to find the length of BD. So um, this time I'm going to look at just this little triangle here. Okay, so here's um, the little triangle, and we don't seem to have very much information. We need a third piece of information to be able to use either of the rules. Um, but the last piece of information we can get actually is this angle here, uh, which would be this one. 
Um, because we know that one's 120, so angles on a straight line add up to 180, so we know then that that one's 60. Okay, this time we've got one side, we want the other side, that side we, we're not even bothering with, so I'm not going to use the cos rule, I can't use that one. Um, this time I'm going to try using the sine rule. It doesn't really matter how you label this triangle up, I'll just pick random, I'll make this one A. And remember that when I write the sine rule, I put the unknown thing that I'm trying to find on the top. So I'm going to do A over sine A here. A is the thing we're trying to find, and we can do sine of 50 equals, and we only need one other bit of the sine rule, um, and it looks like the C's are the bits that we've got. So 6 over sine 60. And like before, I'm going to multiply that, that denominator up to that side. So that lot multiplied by sine 50. And I get 5.3. And lastly, we want the area of this triangle. So I'm going to keep my sketch. And I'm going to relabel the triangle again to make it work. The two sides in the formula are A and B, and they're the two sides that we have. So let's let those be A and B, which means that this last angle is C, and it's C that we have here. So we need this angle, um, but we can get that no problem. Working out angles in a triangle add up to 180, so that one's got to be 70. Okay, have a go. And I get 31.3. Great, well done if you got that. If not, maybe have another go. Otherwise, let's look at one more question. Okay, last question. And this one was actually taken from a past A-level exam paper. Um, we're asked for the side BD and the angle BAD. So uh, just tracing those letters, BAD, that's that angle there that creates. So that's the angle we're looking for. Do you have a go at this? Um, the side BD... I think we'll start with just using this triangle here because that looks like the one we've got the most information for. So I'll sketch that triangle out and label it up. Alright, um, again, we're, we've got two sides, we don't have the third, so it's not going to be cos rule this time, it's going to be sine rule again. Uh, so it doesn't really matter how I label this up, I'll just label it A, B and C. Um, and I'll put the unknown on the top, so the side on the top, B over sine B, that'll be 62. And it looks like the A's are the bits that we know, so 16 over sine of 50. And multiplying that up to that side, we can get B. So 16 over sine 50 multiplied by sine 62. I make that 18.44. Nice one, let's take a look at the angle now. So angle BAD, it makes sense to use this triangle here now. So have a go at sketching it and labelling it up. Okay, we've got all three sides, so it's definitely the cos rule. And in the cos rule, it uses one angle, which is capital A, so that is the one I want here, I'm going to make that one A, which makes this one little a, and then the other two don't really matter. And now let's write out the cos rule, putting in what we know. Okay, and like before, I'm going to work out some of the numbers and rearrange. So I've pulled the negative 400 because I have pulled onto that side to make it positive and I'm taking the 340 off the 500 there to give 160. And then inverse cos gives us the angle which I make to be 66.4 degrees. Sorry, I'm not sure you can actually see that very well because of the light, but that does say 66.4 degrees. Well done if you're getting that. Keep practicing. Um, I hope that was helpful and gave you a good flavour of the sign and cos rules, but there are lots of different questions, so do keep practicing plenty of them. 
have fun and thank you for watching.